prickly pear is a uh, is a herbicide that I mean is a is a plant that uh, has many different forms and shapes and sizes. We have a number of different species of prickly pear. Uh, we anything from the small, low-growing plains prickly pear up in the Panhandle to the big bull, what we call bull Engelmann pear in South Texas, and everything in between. So we get all different sizes. The time to spray pear and the other cactus that we'll talk about uh, is typically in the fall, is the best time. Now the, you can spray during the spring and summer, but again, if we're trying to get the herbicide into the root zone, we've got to move it with the carbohydrates and the carbohydrates are moving in the fall down to the root. The, the old recommendation of spraying mesquite and pear at the same time out of the airplane in the summer worked great on mesquite, but what were we doing? That time of year, we were shipping all of our herbicide to the apples and we'd kill the hell out of the apples. They'd fall off and we may or may not get the pear. A lot of times we'd kill the, the upper margins of the pads, you would see them, the, the plant tissue uh, necrosis there would die. But actually, the best time, if you've got limited time and limited resources, is try to hit that in the fall on into the winter. Uh, don't spray when it's, it's really cold, but uh, you can spray on into the winter. The, uh, just demonstrate real quickly. Now it says prickly pear and other cacti. So if you've got prickly pear, or maybe the, the uh, what we call the uh, tassahia, you may know it as turkey pear. The turkey eat the little, little pear apples here. There's little bitty red berries. If you've never seen one, you come down afterwards and see that. Some call it Christmas cactus, pencil cactus, uh, uh, several different names for the tassahia. It'll work on the tree cactus out west, the big choyas. It'll work on your fish hook and some of your harsh crippler cactus. This herbicide mixture will work well on, on any of those cacti species. <clears throat> the key is timing and also good coverage. I don't know if this is pumped up good enough. You want to try to spray both sides of the pear if it lends itself to that. Trying to get both sides enough. I guess you don't have to just cover it solid. Just get herbicide on both sides. Okay? Especially if you get some of this, this running in the, and you've got a lot of tall grass around here, it's hard to see. One of the hardest things to do is trying to spray individually. Get my wires messed up trying to spray individual plants and missing these low growing running pear. So you've got to look for that. You may have to stomp the grass down a little bit to do it. Spray long enough where you can get both sides. Uh, it's probably not worth your time to try to flip, flip pads that are laying horizontally. Uh, you just spray the tops of them and move on. The little tassahia is not too hard to spray either. Well, I'm getting low on pressure, but actually you might want to spray a good bit on low pressure. You're going to lose, use, use less herbicide, waste less, as long as you get it covered. That's, that's adequate. It's really deadly on tassahia. You can kind of gauge, you can kind of gauge your kill by how well you do on the tassahia in my mind. Okay, now patience is a virtue that you need in spraying cactus, okay? Especially prickly pear. You might spray it in the fall. You may not see anything that fall. And in the spring, you might start seeing it yellow. And you say, well, maybe I'm getting some activity. Maybe by late summer, that yellow is even getting a little bit more yellow. And it may start finally turning brown. It may take two or three growing seasons before you really ash it out, it just turns Ash, ash gray and kills it. So uh, remember that in your, in your spraying. Uh, and I need to, to remind you that uh, 
If you're in part of the world that you don't grow grass that well, have dry year, and you don't have a drought management plan, you know, if, if you're one of those that doesn't have a drought management plan and you end up in a drought, you may need to, to burn the pear and use it for feed. They still do that in South Texas. Uh, also, many wildlife species will eat the, the, the pear apples, whether it's the Tassahia little pear or these. So, uh, matter of fact, uh, small mammals, rats, small rodents, rats, deer, hogs, uh, lots of things will eat that. And it also spreads them very well. One reason we have so much pear is that uh, following the World War II, uh, the uh, King Ranch hit on the idea of uh, using anchor chains and they began chaining much of their brush in their country. Well, that caught on really nice and it moved on up into the state and chaining and cabling became very popular for brush control. But all you got to do, knock that pad off right there lay on the ground in any kind of moisture at all, that pad will send roots down into the soil and can be a new pair. So you can readily see how widely spread a lot of the old chaining work did for prickly pear and those kind of species.